couple of uh, years ago, I went on my first Kairos retreat, um, which is the, basically it's Emmaus inside the prison. Uh, when I went, I was really struggling with knee pain, horrible knee pain. My knee was swelling and it really hurt. And as I was riding out there with Mike Young, I told him, I said, man, I tell you what, my knee is killing me. And so as soon as we got there and we're setting up uh, to begin the Kairos weekend, Michael Young calls some of the men in white over to me. And he said, Pastor Dean here, his knee is hurting really, really bad. Would y'all pray for him? And I have to tell you, these men in white, they, they got down on their knees. They put their hands on my knee. And they began praying some powerful prayers. And I have to tell you, first I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? But they began praying on my knee. And when they finished, I could tell there was a difference. My knee was no longer hurting. It wasn't healed, but it was no longer hurting. And I was able to go through the night without any pain in my knee whatsoever. And I continued on through that Kairos weekend. I even went and, and uh, throughout the prison, uh, well, I, myself and a few other guys, went throughout the prison handing out uh, dozens of cookies to all, the, uh, all of the inmates. And I mean, I was going up and down stairs and everything. So, was I totally healed? No, I still had a knee problem. But I claimed healing because I was there to be, serve, uh, to be serving God. It was an amazing experience. Now some of you have been blessed with a healing miracle. And I'm going to invite you, if you feel that you have been blessed in your life with a healing miracle, well, please raise your hand. Don't be shy. This is part of your testimony. You have been blessed with a healing miracle. It happens even today, but let's be honest. Many of us are skeptical about healing miracles. And I know I have had my fair share of skepticism. For many of us, healing is one of what we might call a breaking point in our faith. Our faith will take us so far, but when we start talking about being healed by faith, at that point, some of us break off from our faith. We're not so sure that we have the faith to ask for healing. Or if we did have the faith, that Christ would even answer a prayer for healing. And so some of us don't want to push our faith beyond that limit. We've set that limit. We've set a limit on God. And we've said, I'm not going beyond that limit. I'm not going to ask for healing. And usually it's because we're afraid. We're afraid, well, what if, what if it's not, the prayer's not answered? What's it going to do to my faith? If I step out and I pray for healing and nothing happens, then what? And so healing is maybe a breaking point for some of us in our faith. But as I mentioned last week, Jesus never said to anyone, your skepticism has made you whole. Your skepticism has healed you. No, always, 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 Jesus has said, your faith has made you whole. And so it was in the scripture that we just read. I went and looked through, and in the Bible, there are 20 instances in the Gospels of Jesus healing others. Twenty. And in those twenty instances, thirty-two people were healed. And we're confident that that's not all of the, of the healings that took place with Jesus. But twenty instances with thirty-two people receiving a healing miracle. There are three recorded instances of Jesus raising someone from the dead. And then when Jesus sent out his disciples to go out into the world as apostles, as one of uh, those who are sent, they too brought healing to others. And so we see from the scriptures that healing is an essential part of our faith 
in Jesus Christ. I think there's enough evidence from here that we can say that Christ has given us a green light to say it's okay to pray for healing for yourself and for others. And I'm still in the business of healing. I'm the great physician, the greatest there ever was. We should always feel that we can approach Christ with confidence that He is a God of healing. Now last week I shared with you that I went to the New Room Conference in Nashville. It was an amazing experience, uh, one of those mountaintop experiences I'm sure I'll never forget. Um, and when we were there, we started with uh, a presentation uh, on exploring the power of the Holy Spirit. And we were told that, you know, we're going to start this you know, kind of slow as we talk about the Holy Spirit. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, within an hour, we're having a healing service. And I will be honest, I'm kind of like, oh boy, here we go. We're going to have a healing service. Now what's going to happen? You know, what happened is exactly what happens, uh, Nellie, in our prayer and healing service. You know, the, the people who were, the men who were leading that presentation were not hucksters. I mean, they weren't people in white three-piece suits with white patent leather shoes calling you up on the stage, hitting you on the head and having you fall over. That wasn't it at all. I mean, one of the uh, presenters was a bishop in the Anglican Church. I mean, you talk about stiff people. I mean, the Anglican Church is full of stiff people. But he was proclaiming the power of the healing and the Holy Spirit. The other presenter was a retired uh, seminary professor from Dallas Theological Seminary. He taught Old Testament history. And both of them were proclaiming the power of the Holy Spirit in bringing healing to us. And so they had us, uh, they had people raise their hands if they had a certain ailment, if they had back pain, they would raise their hands. And so we would gather in groups around those people. We would be commissioned to pray for them for healing. And we had remarkable results. I happened to be with a group of a young lady who came to the conference with some pretty bad back pain. And she professed that her back pain had gone away while we were healing, much like my knee pain. Another person who came to be healed had neck pain. He professed that his neck pain had gone away, but not only that, he was in tears for the joy of the Holy Spirit. You know, healing is still a miracle that Jesus wants to perform for us if we'll just yield to the power of the Holy Spirit and put knocking pins on. So the results were fairly remarkable. For those of you who have come to our prayer and healing service over in the chapel, we've experienced the same thing. And we do it the same way. When someone wants healing, we gather around that person, we lay hands on them, we pray over them, and we have experienced the power of the miracle of healing in that room. We have been blessed to witness the power of Christ in healing. And so the purpose of today's message is really to call upon us to, to take extra steps in faith to believe that Jesus Christ is the great healer. And He still, still heals today. You've raised your hands. You've given testimony to that. Now our scripture today is one of my favorite uh, scriptures on healing. Uh, it's the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. And it's in three of the four Gospels. You see, by way of background, Jesus and his disciples had just landed on the shore at a location in the Sea of Galilee. And when they get there, they're immediately met by the head of the local synagogue, a man named Jairus. His daughter was very sick. She was near death. And he had no other place to turn. And so he goes to Jesus, kneels before Jesus and begs Jesus to come to his house to bring healing to his 12-year-old daughter. And so Jesus begins to walk with Jairus toward his house. As he's on the way, there's another woman in this big crowd. And then we see this crowd, this mob just pressing against Jesus. And there's another woman in this crowd and she's 
taking great care to hide her face. She wants to be anonymous. And she goes to the foot of Jesus' hem, of the hem of his garment. And she says this. She makes this remarkable statement. She says, if I just touch his clothes, what? I will be healed. She didn't say I may be healed. She didn't say this is my last option, although it was. She said I will be healed. Now look at the background of this lady. She had been having this bleeding for years, for 12 years, the scripture says. She had spent all of her money on physicians. None of them could heal her. And you can only imagine how horrible some of these procedures were that she went through. None of them could heal her. She spent all of her money. She was broke and she was even worse off than she was before she even went to the doctors. Jesus was her last hope. And so she goes to him and says, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Now what she did was a brave thing because by the fact that she was bleeding under Jewish law, that made her impure. Okay? That made her impure because under the uh, in Leviticus 15 it says that you know, when a woman goes through that time of the month it, it, they become impure. You have to at the conclusion of that, the woman would have to go through a period of purification including a ceremonial bath to be uh, to be pure and clean again. And, and during that period of time a woman is not to touch anybody because anybody the woman touched touches becomes defiled. They themselves become unclean. Now we can only imagine how many people this woman touched as she's working her way through the crowd. But they didn't know. But she felt if she gets there, she will be healed. There will be no more defilement. I, when we went to the Holy Land, there was a beautiful painting in a chapel of this event. And uh, Troy, if you could I don't know if it's on the slide or not. Can you see that? You can barely see it, unfortunately. But if you look, you see the feet of the people around, and you see a woman's arm at the very bottom, reaching out to touch the hem of Jesus' robe. It's a beautiful picture. You see, she, she went to at great cost and great risk to go to Jesus, but she knew that this would be it. This would be her healing. And Jesus, as soon as she touched the robe, Scripture says she was immediately healed. She felt the healing presence of Jesus coursing through her body. And she was healed immediately. Jesus felt it too. He felt the power of healing leaving his body, and so he stops right dead in his tracks and asks the question, Who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples, being human as they were, said, Jesus, what do you mean who touched you? Look at all the people who are pressing in on you, and you're asking us who touched you? What a dumb question, Jesus. But he wasn't going to give up. Who touched me? Who touched me? And finally, out of fear, but also out of gratitude, she falls at the feet of Jesus and she confesses that she was the one who touched him. And so Jesus blesses her and says, daughter. You hear that? He calls her daughter. A term of endearment, a term of familial relationship. He says, daughter, your faith has healed you. He didn't say, I healed you. He said, your faith heals you. Your faith heals you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Now, why did Jesus do that? She wanted to be anonymous, but yet he makes sure that he finds out who it is that had gotten healing or had become healed. Why did he do that? Well, the answer is that moment of healing was the beginning of a new life for her. And he wanted to bless her as she enters into her new life. He wanted to bless her. 
You see, she's been ostracized from society because she continuously bleeds. She can never be pure. But now that the bleeding has stopped, she can return to being a member of society. She can return to community. She can return in fullness and wholeness, not, not just physically, but spiritually as well. In our Bible study Thursday, I said, you know, after this, after this healing, she would have to go to the uh, synagogue priest and to announce that she'd been healed. And I'm sure the synagogue priest probably had a gynecologist or somewhere nearby that would have to check it out to be sure that she had been healed. And once she knew and was sure that she had been healed, then she would have to go through the purification rites. And I kept saying, she would have to do this, she would have to do that. And Jack Cochran was sitting there, and he interrupted me. He said, no, she gets to go through the purification rites. She gets to go through and be cleansed ceremonially. She gets to return to her community. This was a start of a new life for her. All of the chains that bound her, the physical torment, the separation from her community, the ostracizing, the isolation, all of those chains were broken. And I really enjoyed the song last week with the praise band saying, because it's so appropriate, our chains are broken through Christ, through the power of Jesus. And so I believe that Jesus empowers us today through the Holy Spirit to be healed. And how does that occur? Well, the first and most obvious way it occurs is through physicians. You know, uh, I, when we were at the conference, a lady named uh, Rika McCroy, who is uh, of Indian descent, who has a strange picture of an Indian and uh, accent with a southern drawl. <laughs> she's from Georgia. Uh, she spoke to us. She is a part-time ophthalmologist. And uh, she spoke to us about you know, her experiences uh, as uh, you know, writing Bible studies, giving Bible studies, and the like. But she shared this, that she was on a mission team to Costa Rica. And when they got there, the team went to a church to go worship with some of the uh, native Costa Ricans. Well, unlike our churches down there, healing is a regular part of every worship service. And so when it came time to worship, the team there that was there was called upon to pray over individuals for healing. She had never done that before. And wouldn't you know that this little ophthalmologist, Rika, the very first person brought to her was totally blind. And she had never prayed for healing before, so she began by asking this person, well, do you want to, do you want to see a little bit, or do you want to see a lot? And he said, I want to see a lot. And so she just said, oh boy, here we go. And so she puts her hands over, her, over his eyes, and she's praying so fervently, and powerfully, she knew how. This is the first time she's ever done it. And she like, slowly removes her hands from his eyes and says, Can you see? No. Nope. Can't see. So she does it again. She puts the, her hands over his eyes and she again, she prays with all the power she has in the name of Jesus and prays the blood of Jesus over his, his uh, eyesight. Takes it off. Can you see now? No. Nope. I can't see. And so she promised him she would continue praying and she felt like a total failure. Well then, the next few days, this group left to go to church and she was hoping it would be another church. She did not want to have to, you know, see this guy again and have to face up to her failures. But no, they go back to that church and sure enough, that man goes back to her. He still can't see. And she's going, oh Jesus, I feel terrible. He wants healing and I can't do anything. And she said that still small voice inside of me said, assess him. Assess him. She was, after all, an ophthalmologist. And she didn't have anything but a pen light, but she got to looking in his eyes and she found that he had glaucoma and he had cataracts. 
And so she asked the, the, uh, their liaison there if, if there was a, an ophthalmologist who could do surgery to help with his glaucoma and to remove his cataracts. And sure enough, there was. And so he went to the surgeon, and guess what? His, his prayers were answered. You know, the physician is our first choice. I mean, God has given us miracles of healing through physicians. He's given us miracles of, of healing through the knowledge of the human body. The second way we can be healed is through the prayers of others. If you recall in Scripture, there was a time when a centurion approached Jesus and said that his servant was home sick and asked Jesus if he would heal him. And Jesus said, sure, let's go. And the centurion said, oh, no, Lord, you don't need to go to my house. Just say the word and he will be healed. And Jesus remarked, I have never seen this kind of faith. And so Jesus said, you may know your servant has been healed. And he was. A mother of a young lady, who, and they were Gentiles, went to Jesus. And she asked Jesus to bring healing to her daughter. And when Jesus said, well, you're not a Jew. And she says, I understand. But even the dogs get to get the crumbs under the table. And Jesus said, I've not seen faith like this. Your daughter is healed. The four men that carried the crippled man on a stretcher up to the top of a roof and made a, an opening in the roof and set the man down through this opening so he could get before Jesus to be healed. Jesus said, what to the four men? I haven't seen faith like this from anyone. The four men, it was their faith. They brought healing to the crippled man. Another way of healing is through prayers of the church. Many of you have raised prayer concerns. Many of you submit concerns to Nellie or to me for healing for someone who needs healing. James 5, verses 14 and 15 says this, Is any among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them, and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. I don't think James wrote that just for grins. James is teaching us how to be the church. We lay hands on those who are in need of healing. And we pray for their healing. And so you might say, well, gee, pastor, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'll be praying for healing, you pray over me, what if I'm not healed? We come back and we'll pray for you again, and we'll pray for you again, and we'll pray for you again. Remember, Jesus in Luke, uh, Luke chapter 18 tells the parable of the woman and the judge. When the woman could not get the judge's attention, what did she do? She kept going back to the judge, back to the judge, back to the judge, until finally the judge listened to what she had to say. And the scripture says that he told this parable to show them that they should always pray and never give up. And so if you are praying for this miracle of healing, you don't get it the first time. We don't quit. We keep praying. One of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to be healed or you're going to feel so spiritually alive that you know that Christ has given you the grace and the strength to endure whatever you're going through. Christ is still, still in the healing business. We have to remember that. What we've put in your bulletin is a healing prayer I want you to take that home. Pray it. And if you want, on the back, we've got a space for you to put notes. And I want you to be prepared to share to your congregation what's happened. I invite us now to enter into a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, last week we just prayed to be more of the Holy Spirit. 
We want to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. We want to be woken up by the Holy Spirit. We want to be animated by the Holy Spirit. We want to be filled up to overflowing in the Holy Spirit. We want Jesus. We want more of Jesus. We want Jesus to be part of our lives every moment of every day. Lord, we confess that sometimes our unbelief gets the better of us. And so today, Father, we pray for more faith, for powerful faith, for healing faith, for faith that brings not just healing to us, but healing to others. Father, there are people here who are just bound up. They're bound up in physical pain. Pain that just won't seem to go away. We pray that they will come forward to be healed. Father, there are those people here today who are sad. They're bound up in the emotional curse of sadness that just won't seem to go away. Father, we pray that they'll come forward to be healed. There are those, Father, that we know are suffering spiritually. They feel spiritually dead. Father, we pray that they'll come forward to be healed. Father, let us never be afraid to be bold before you to offer these people up to you to be healed. May our faith grow, grow like the mustard seed. May our faith carry us as we seek to be healed and as we seek to heal. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.